Shout with joy to God on the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer him glory and praise. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of his name. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Devoratorium. My name is Darnay Devore, and I'm going to be your host. On today's episode, the Father and the Son, a perfect unity. There are so many folks out there who they question the identity and the deity of Jesus Christ. They question his equality with God. The Jehovah's Witness will claim that he is God, but not almighty God. The Mormon will claim that Jesus was born directly from the Father. In both cases, the point is that Jesus did not always exist. He's not eternal. He just came into existence at some point in time. Now, there's other faith claims that they've got even more interesting conclusions about the identity or deity of Jesus. But today we're going to take a look at some of the main verses they use. And then we're going to take a look at some titles that God and Jesus both share together. Okay, let's start with John 14, 28. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. This is one of the most often quoted verses when, they're, when, when the folks are trying to prove that Jesus is not equal to God the Father. But what they're not realizing that is that in this verse, Jesus is speaking as flesh and blood Jesus. They're forgetting that Jesus emptied himself of all his godly divinity in order to become flesh. Okay. Once he did that, of course, God is greater than him because God is still God. And Jesus became just a mortal man like you and me. We see this in Philippians 2, 6 through 8. It reads, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. This is Jesus. Okay, this is Jesus in flesh and blood. This verse starts off being in very nature, God talking about Jesus in very nature. Jesus is God, but did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Okay, as the verse progresses, we see that he made himself human like you and me, and he died on the cross. This is why when God, when Jesus says the father is greater than I. Well, of course he is. You're not going to put the father on a cross to die. Okay. That's God who's still exercising his divine power. Jesus is a son of God who no longer uses his divine power. He gave it all up to become like us so he can die rather than so he can die for our sin. So Philippians 2, 6 through 8 says that both God, the father and God, the son are equal. But we know that a creation can never be equal to its own creator. Now, I did a previous video. It's called the five facts of the real Jesus. It's actually a five part series where we go through five individual facts about the real Jesus based on scripture. Feel free to check that out if you want to go into more detail of Jesus himself. We're going to continue on in this video with the relationship between the father and the son, the perfect unity that they share. In John 10, 28 through 30, it reads, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. What's going on here? I give them eternal life. This is Jesus speaking. How can Jesus give someone eternal life if he himself does not have eternal life? Okay, that's number one. Keep reading. They shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. No one will snatch the people he give, gives eternal life. No one's going to snatch them out of the hand of Jesus. That's what it says. 
continue on, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Wait a minute. My father's hand? Whose hand are they in? Jesus' hand or the father's hand? Because you see both in this verse. It's all explained in the last part. I and the father are one. They have a unity and as well as a distinction. Okay. Jesus never speaks about the father as if he himself is the father. And the father never speaks about the son as if the son is himself. Okay. They always speak about each other as if they are someone other than themselves. Yet and still they have a oneness, a unity that we're, that's still a mystery. We're still trying to figure this out. How can they be one and yet distinct? This is a spiritual concept that we have so little knowledge of. All we can do is trust the words of the Bible. They are one and yet distinct. John 10, 31 through 33, continue on with the same passage. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Earlier in the passage, verse 30, when Jesus said, I and the Father are one, that was all these folks needed to hear. Oh, he's saying that he's God. That's what they heard. That's what they understood. And that's why they were going to stone him because that was outright blasphemy unless Jesus is God. God the Son, not God the Father, but God the Son. If he's not God the Son, if he's just the Son or a lesser God, then this would be considered blasphemy and they had every right to stone him. Can you imagine Noah ever saying that the Father and I are one? Or Moses or King David, the Father and I are one? No, no, they knew better. They knew that they were servants of God but they themselves were not God. Even an angel, the angels in heaven, they claim to be messengers of God, fellow servants. They are not God, and so they are not one with God. Only Christ Jesus can claim that title. Now, what about glory, okay? God says he doesn't share his glory with anyone. We see that in Isaiah 42 and verse eight, and we see it in Isaiah 48 and verse 11. God shares his glory with no one. In John 17, verse five, we see that Jesus shared God's glory before the world began. Again, how is that possible? When God says, I share my glory with no one, well, Jesus is not just anyone or someone. Jesus is God. Jesus is God, the son. He's God in the flesh. So when it says Jesus shared God's glory before the world began, that's because Jesus is God as well. John 8, 54 says that God glorifies Jesus. God the Father is glorifying God the Son. Have you ever known God to glorify an angel or any created being? No, Everybody glorifies God, but here God the Father is glorifying Jesus. In John 16, 15, it says that all that is God's, everything that belongs to God the Father, belongs to God the Son. Now, some folks will say, well, that's because God the Son is inheriting everything from the Father. The only way that analogy works is if God the Father dies. Okay, if he dies, then sure, now God the Son can inherit everything from the Father. But if the Father is still alive, which we know that he can't die because he's God the Father, then how can everything that God the Father have be, cons uh, be God the Son, be belong to God the Son? How can that be? Easy if they're both God. I know this can be a challenging concept because we're trying to make sense of it from our own human perception. We're trying to figure out how this works in our mindset. And it's very difficult. This is a challenge for me too. But this is what scripture says. We don't have to understand how everything works in the cosmos or even within the Godhead, okay? We don't have to understand every single aspect of it. All we have to do is trust that it is what it says it is and have faith that Jesus is our savior. 
Jesus is God as the Bible says he is. What I find interesting is that Jesus and God, both they share titles. And as we go through these, these are titles that I'm sure you will agree cannot be shared with God and an angel, God and a man, or God and any created being for that matter. Because remember, God doesn't share his glory with anyone. So we're going to go through a few titles and the scriptures where you can find where God and Jesus both have the same title or serve the same function. God the Father and God the Son are both the Creator, according to Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 3. God the Father and God the Son are both the Savior, according to Isaiah 43, 11 and John 4, 42. God the Father and God the Son both give life, according to 1 Samuel 2 and 6 and John 5 and 21. Both God the Father and God the Son are the light, according to Isaiah 60, 19 through 20, and John 8, verse 12. Both God the Father and God the Son are the great I Am, according to Exodus 3, 14, and John 8, 58. Both God the Father and God the Son are the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, You'll see that in Isaiah 44, 6, Revelation 1, 8, Revelation 1, 17 through 18, Revelation 2, verse 8, and Revelation 22 and 13. Both God the Father and God the Son can forgive sins, according to Jeremiah 31 and 34, and Mark 2, 5 through 10. Both God the Father and God the Son are worshipped by angels, Psalm 148, verse 2, and Hebrews 1 verse 6. Both God the Father and God the Son occupy the same throne. We see that in Psalm 45 and 6 and Hebrews 1 verse 8. Who else can share these titles? Who else can share these positions with God except for God? Certainly not a created being, angel, or a man. So once again, we're just, we're noticing a unity between God the Father and God the Son that is so close yet distinctly different, okay? Neither one ever considers themselves to be the other. They always consider themselves as someone separate yet and still one God, not two gods, one God distinct with distinct personalities. Now, in this video, we only covered the unity of God the Father and God the Son. We did not touch on the unity of God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Once we cover that, that's going to complete our Trinity, okay? So, look out for that. That's coming up. I'm working on that one. But in the meantime, thank you for joining me today and stay tuned for the next video.